home. I'm just a passing through begin to go over in my mind. I don't know about you, but I'm ready to move into a new place tonight. I'm ready to move into a land where God wants me to be. Too many of us tonight are living in a land where we don't belong. We're living in a land of depression, a land of despair, a land of addiction, a land of financial troubles, and a land of fear. But I'm here to tell you, you're, you're living in a land where you don't belong. You're not enjoying everything that the Lord has in store for you. You're living tonight beneath your potential. You're living on the wrong side of the river. Hallelujah. I ask you tonight, are you tired? of seeing the same old landscape? Are you tired of going around in the same old circles? Tonight's the night to cross over to the other side. God has a better place for you tonight. A place free from depression. A place free from despair. A place free from addiction. A place of hope and love and joy. Uh, Brother Coffee, last night you preached a wonderful message, but I believe that book is on the other side of the river. I believe that final chapter of the book is on the other side. It's time to move from a land where you don't belong. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Worship tonight, Lord. Sing, here I am, I've come to find you, and here I am to seek your face. Oh, I've come to bring to you an offering, I have to ask myself one thing, how can I do anything but pray? to seek your face I've come to bring to you an offering oh I have to ask myself one thing how can I do anything but pray oh I pray oh you are God you are God you are Lord you are all I'm living for you are I want my life to praise you. You are God. You are Lord. You are all I'm living for. Oh, and you are King of everything. I want my life to praise you. My life to praise you, Lord. Sing, here I am. I've come to thank you. Oh, here I am. Praise you, oh, to praise you, Lord. Here 
Thankfully, it changed you because, because you, you gave, gave your life for me. You came down and died for me. I'm so thankful you changed my life. Here I am. Oh, the life. The life you changed. Anybody feel that way tonight? Oh, because, because you, you gave, gave your life for me. Oh, and you, you came, came down, down and died for me. I can't do anything. What I like to praise you. You are God, you are Lord, you are all I'm living for. Oh, and you, you are, are King of everything. everything. I want my life to praise you. I want my life to praise you. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, we praise you, Lord. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. Worship your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. Did you come to worship the king tonight? I don't know about you, but I came to lift up the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, we've come to worship the king. He's the God of Israel. Worship. The God of Israel, worship the King. The God of Israel, worship the King. Hear the God of Israel, we kneel down before you, place no one above you. We kneel down before you, the God of Israel.
all of the gods, they are the works of man, not Buddha, not Allah, no Confucius, or Baal, oh, we only worship, we only bow to the God of Confucius or Baal, we only worship, we only bow to the God of Israel. We've come to worship the King. Oh, He's the God of Israel. Worship the King. Oh, He's the God of Israel. Worship the King. Oh, the God of Israel. Worship the King. God of Israel. Hallelujah, Jesus. God, we worship you, Lord. We praise your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. We worship you tonight. There's no one like you, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. We worship you this evening. There's no God like our God. There's no rock like our rock. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. If our ushers will get ready. Amen. If you'll link up with somebody around you. If you can look at them. We're going to invoke the spirit of Goshen. Amen. If you'll look at them and if you let them know, you're going to get a raise on your job. A bonus check. Or an unexpected blessing. Look at them and say, may the blessings of the Lord be upon you. And I bless you in the name of the Lord. Now if we can, let's raise our hands and invoke the spirit of Ghost. Amen. If the ushers will make their way, worship with us in giving and in song.
Can we just lift up our hands? Hallelujah, Jesus. God, I thank you, Lord, for your presence. Oh, we praise you, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, we praise you, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, 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 Jesus. Oh, we bless your name, God. We bless your name, God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Praise your name. Amen. Well, we're still staying. I'm going to turn the service to our pastor. Grim this pulpit with an apostolic amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We stand on the new precipice of power and favor with God. This weekend is not just Mother's Day weekend. It is a dimension and a doorway that we're going to walk through in the spirit that is going to be so powerful and supernatural that miracles are going to take place and healing is going to happen. But here's what we have to understand. That sometimes it's the moment before Calvary that causes the people to scatter. It's that time of unsure uh, about who you are and, and, and where you're going. It's those moments where Jesus is not just silent. He is persecuted. Where you have to make up in your mind that I'm not going to leave this moment just because times are getting tough. I feel like I have a question in the Holy Ghost tonight. If Jesus never does anything else for you, does that determine your faith in him? Because if it does, then you've got to question why you're really in this thing. Because I'm not in this thing to, for me to get something down here. I'm in this thing for me to get something over there. There's a happy land of promise. Over in the great beyond, where the saved of earth shall soon their glory share. Where the souls of men shall enter and live on forevermore. Well, I can feel nobody's with me tonight. Everybody will be happy over there. Well, there we'll meet the one who saved us and who kept us by his grace and who brought us to that land so bright and fair. Oh, and we'll praise his name forever as we look upon his face. Everybody will be happy over there. Mothers, fathers, sisters, brothers.
brothers will be gathered around the throne in that land where no one ever knows the care. And the saints of all ages will join in the triumph song. Everybody will be happy. Miracles, signs, and wonders are just a perk of who I am. But what I'm really in this thing for is that I want to see his face. I want to hear him say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Oh, come on, somebody. I might be in a Calvary moment, but Pentecost is on its way. I might be in a persecution moment, but rejoice not against me, oh, my enemy. For when I fall, I shall. That's why this, this weekend's theme needs to be Satan. I know this is old stuff here. Satan, your kingdom's coming down. Satan, your kingdom's coming down. How do you know that? Well, I heard the voice of Jesus say. Not, I don't mean to be, I'm not trying to be, I'm not trying to be disrespectful here, but I didn't hear the voice of Jerry or Jeremy, or Jonathan, or Stephen, or Bruce. I heard the voice of Jesus, the Christ, the anointed one, say, Satan, Satan, your kingdom is coming down. You see, what Satan doesn't know is all the persecution is just setting me up for my blessing and my power. What he don't know is the cross is not meant to kill the church. It's meant to empower the church. What he doesn't know is though he slay me, yet will I trust in him. What he doesn't know is even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for he is with me and his rod and staff comforts me. What he doesn't know is I am coming out of this with my hands up. I'm coming out with my hands up. I'm coming out with my hands up. I got to pray. In spite of pain, I got to praise. In spite of persecution, I've got to praise. In spite of sickness, I've got to praise. In spite of disease, I've got to praise. Well, I heard that. Man, you're just going to try to preach every time it's time to give him the service. I'm trying not to. But I'm telling you, the devil needs you to, to, or excuse me, Jesus needs you to let the devil know tonight whose side you're on. If a demon walked in here right now, could he tell that you're against him? Or would he think you're on his team? Oh, Satan. Is this all right? I'll turn it to him like this. I know he wants me to get out of the way because he can feel the power of the Holy Ghost ready. Oh, Satan, your kingdom's coming down. Oh, said Satan, your kingdom's coming down. Oh, I heard the voice of Jesus say, Satan, your kingdom's coming down. I'm going to pray till I tear your kingdom down. Hallelujah. 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 
I know my voice is starting to become common to some of you, but if you'll let me be a prophet for a second to you, I'm going to tell you what needs to happen in your life. All the devils that you've been fighting can be cast to a sea of, 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 of the total destruction. Now, if you would just give the spirit uh, of the man we call Legion and run to him uh, and worship him. Don't hesitate. Don't don't sit there and wait but get in the spirit right the moment that the preacher starts preaching and say tonight temptation's going to leave tonight sickness is going to leave tonight disease is going to leave tonight bitterness is going to leave tonight anger is going to leave tonight shame is going to leave well preacher I don't know if I can listen to me if a 2,000 demonic spirited man can run to Jesus and worship him on the seashore then that was bound in tombs uh, and was messing around in demonic areas uh, that we can't even fathom then I know somebody that made it to the house of God tonight can run to where Jesus is and worship him uh, with all their heart Now I've spit enough. It's 8 o'clock. I'm going to get out of the way. But I'm going to tell you, you don't need to wait one more night. Sunday is not the time for the breakthrough. Sunday is the time to pray people through. Souls need to be saved Sunday. People need to be changed Sunday. We don't need to be babysitting the church Sunday. Come on, tonight is the night for you to have a complete change. And it starts with people that make up in their mind. That tonight is the night that I praise my way out of this grave. All right. Amen. Brother Coffey, I'm so thankful he came by here and he's preaching a revival for us. Amen. I'm thankful that he is mine in the Lord. And I'm glad that he feels better tonight. Amen. And was not uh, a long time sickness. Amen. So uh, I believe that he has a word from the Lord tonight for this church. And uh, it don't even have to line up with anything I just said. I'm talking to you as your pastor. Because some of y'all have been fighting a fight that you should have already won. And uh, it's, it's just a matter of praising God like you already won it. Amen. Shout for God has already given you the city. Shout like you already won. Don't shout like you want to win. Shout like you already won. Shout like you just heard that you don't have a disease. Shout like you just heard that you have been healed. Then you will be healed. Shout like you just heard the news you've been praying for. Then it will come to pass. It's not up to me. It's up to you. It's not up to this preacher. It's up to you. He cannot pull anything down. It's up to you. Shout for the victory. Mm -hmm. Oh, my There's a miracle getting ready to take place. There's a miracle getting ready to take place. Not healing, not, not something gradual, not something that's explainable. There's a miracle getting ready to take place, and I believe it's going to be in the realm of deliverance. This preacher's going to start preaching, and while he's preaching, your reaction will determine your reward. I said your reaction will determine your reward. Somebody say, preach, preacher. Oh, clap your hands, all you people, and shout. Unto God with a voice of triumph. Come on, is somebody tonight hungry for a move of God? Is somebody hungry to say, I walked in here broken, but I want to leave healed? I walked in here with trouble, but I want to leave changed. I believe the presence of God is in this house. If somebody would just reach out and grab it. If somebody would just step out of your comfort zone and say, I'm hungry for a change. I'm hungry for a miracle. I'm hungry for deliverance. I'm hungry for revival. I believe the presence of God is in this house. All you got to do is reach out and grab Grab it, reach out and claim it. Come on, somebody. Come on, you don't gotta leave like you came. You don't gotta leave how you walked in here. 
You just got to make up in your mind. I'm not leaving like I came. I'm going to get a hold of what God's doing in this house. I'm going to get a hold of the Spirit of God moving. Amen. Amen. If you'll allow me, I'm just going to jump into the Word. I'm, I won't hit preliminaries or nothing. I'm just going to jump into the Word. Genesis chapter 22 and verse number 1. I feel like the Lord gave me direction for tonight. And I'm going to do my best to deliver it. If this catches in five minutes, don't wait for me to give an altar call. If this catches, just go. I'm done whenever God's done. So just help me. Ready? If you're there, Genesis 22 and 1, say amen. Amen. It says, and it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham and said unto him, Abraham, and he said, behold, here I am. And he said, take now thy son, thine only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah. And offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains which I will tell thee of. And Abraham rose up early in the morning and saddled his ass. And took two of his young men with him and Isaac his son. And clave the wood for the burnt offering and rose up and went unto the place which God had told him. Then on the third day Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar off. And Abraham said unto the young men, Abide ye here with the ass, and I and the lad will go yonder and worship, and come again to you. And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it upon Isaac his son. And he took the fire in his hand and a knife, and they went both of them together. And Isaac spake unto Abraham his father and said, My father, and he said, Here am I, my son. And he said, Behold the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? And Abraham said, My son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they went both of them together. And they came to the place which God had told him of. And Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order and bound Isaac his son and laid him on the altar upon the wood. And Abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. And the angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here am I. And he said, Lay not thine hand upon the lad, neither thou do thou anything unto him. For now I know that thou fearest God, seeing thou hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, from me. Skipping down to verse 15. And the angel of the Lord called unto Abraham out of heaven the second time and said, By myself have I sworn, saith the Lord, for because thou hast done this thing and hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, that in blessing... I will bless thee, and in multiplying I will multiply thy seed as the stars of heaven and as the sand which is upon the seashore. And thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies. Anybody want that? And in thy seed shall all nations of the earth be blessed, because thou hast obeyed my voice. The Lord said, now I know, because you're willing to put your Isaac on the altar. I want to preach tonight about an altar of all. An altar of all. If you'll put your Bibles down and ask me to, or help me pray, ask the Lord to have his way in the remainder of this service. God, have your way in this house, God. Hallelujah. The church say amen. You may be seated. I'd have you to know that this was not Abraham's first altar that he had built. The Bible lets us know that in Genesis chapter 12, the Lord comes to him and there Abraham, he builds an altar. And it's the altar where the promise is given. It's the altar where God would begin to let him know, I'm going to make of thee a great nation. And I'm going to make out of your lineage a great people. And I'm going to bless you. A little few verses later, Abraham will build another altar. And we'll probably preach about that altar eventually. But the Lord doesn't speak to him there. And he goes down into Egypt. To, and in verse or chapter 13, once again, Abraham, he builds another altar. And there 
It's an altar of renewal. It's an altar of letting the Lord, I'm not going back, but I'm going forward. This was not Abraham's first altar that he built. He was well versed in going out to the field and, and picking out the lamb that it would take for the sacrifice. He knew what it would take to go out there and find the lamb and begin to make sure it was without spot or blemish. And he knew what it took to get the perfect lamb. Abraham, he knew what it was like to go and to uh, get the wood to build an altar. He had built an altar before. He knew what it was like to sacrifice unto God. And he knew how to take that lamb and strap it onto an altar. He knew how to take the fire and the words to say to bring the sacrifice. But the Lord begins to come to J uh, Abraham and he says, Abraham, I want you to take your son Isaac, your only son whom thou lovest, uh, and I want you to take him to a mountain uh, and there I want you to sacrifice your son. Uh, I, I believe it would be safe to say uh, and to surmise by the scripture uh, that Isaac was Abraham's all. He was Abraham's best. He was the son that he loved the most. Uh, I read in Genesis 25 when he had more sons uh, that he takes them. The Bible says he gave all to Isaac but he takes the rest of the sons and gives them gifts uh, and he sends them away. I believe that Isaac was, was Abraham's best. I believe that was the one that he loved the most. He was willing to take Ishmael and send him away to preserve Isaac. And he was willing to send all of his other sons away to make sure that Isaac was able to succeed. I believe that if Isaac and Ishmael was wrestling in the field that Abraham, whenever they would fall and get bruised up and, and bloodied up, that he would go to Isaac first and, and mend up his wounds uh, and make sure Isaac was okay. Uh, I believe that whenever they would be climbing a hill and Isaac would fall and Ishmael would fall, he'd go to Isaac first uh, and make sure Isaac was okay and bind up his wounds. Uh, I believe whenever he'd be walking through the marketplace that he'd say, this is Isaac. Uh, this is my son. This is my best. Uh, this is my all. Uh, and I know tonight I'm preaching to a church uh, that knows what sacrifice is. Uh, I know I'm preaching to a church uh, that knows what it's like to build an altar uh, but the, I feel like the Lord told me to tell abundant life uh, you've come as far as you can go uh, on the altars that you've built in the past uh, you've come as far as you can go uh, with the sacrifice uh, that you've given in the past uh, I'm thankful for all your sacrifice uh, I'm thankful for all your altars you built uh, but I feel like God's calling abundant life uh, saying it's time to go get your Isaac uh, out of the field it's time to go get your Isaac out of the house. I know you've protected your best. I know you've held your best back. I know you've tried to protect it. But I'm calling abundant life to climb up a mountain and build an altar and put your best on the altar. Come on, I'm preaching to a church that it's time. God's calling a church to a place of sacrifice. And all your sacrifices before, I'm thankful for. I'm thankful for all your time of commitment but tonight it's the time to get Isaac out of the house it's time to get your best out of the field it's time to get your everything and get it on an altar and put it there Come on, I'm preaching to somebody. I don't know what your Isaac is. I don't know what you're holding back. But the Lord sent me here tonight to tell you, get your Isaac out of the field and get your all on the altar. Come on, I don't know if you're, if you're Isaac's time or if you're Isaac's money or if you're Isaac's prayer or praise. But whatever you've been holding back, it's time to get Isaac out of the field. It's time to quit holding back your best. It's time to quit holding back your all and say, I'm putting Isaac on the altar tonight. I'm putting my all on the altar. Come on, whenever he got there uh, and he took his best, uh, he took his all uh, and put it on the altar. Uh, the Lord begins to boom out and say, in blessing, uh, I will bless you uh, and I'm going to multiply you. Uh, and you're going to possess the gate uh, of your enemy. Uh, and in these shall all nations of the earth be blessed. Uh, I want to know what, what's being held back because uh, we won't put Isaac on the altar. What's being held back because we're holding on to our Isaac? Uh, could this church double? Uh, could your backslidden? 
grandchildren pray through? Could your husband or your wife pray back through? I feel like the Lord told me tonight, go get your Isaac and put him on the altar. Whenever that, whenever Isaac makes his way to the altar, that's when the miracles are going to come. That's when your revival's going to come. That's when your children's going to pray through. But you're not going to get it as long as you keep Isaac tucked away. Long as you hold back your best. Come on, somebody. Get Isaac out of the house and get him to the altar at the time of sacrifice. I imagine Abraham, as the Lord told him, he said, the Bible says it was grievous to him. I imagine Abraham thought, Lord, if you'll wait, there's some more sons in my lineage that's going to come forth. Maybe I could give Eleazar the head of my house. His name means strength or aid. Maybe I could give Ishmael hearing. Maybe I could put Zimran uh, musical on the altar. Maybe I could put Jokshan or a weapon on the altar. Maybe I could do Midian uh, judgment. Maybe I could do Ishbak uh, forsaking. Or maybe I could put Sheba humility on the altar. Uh, God's saying I'm thankful for everything uh, that you could put on the altar. But tonight I'm calling abundant life. Uh, and I want to know will you put your all uh, on the altar? Uh, are you willing to put what you've held back to dearest? Uh, what you've held on for long enough? Uh, and say God. God, tonight I'm laying it on the altar. Tonight I'm putting my everything. Come on, I'm thankful for everything you've done in the past. There was a rich young ruler that said, I've kept all the commandments. I've done all that in the past. What do I need to do? He said, go sell everything that you have and follow me. I feel like somebody tonight, I know sometimes we think we're people of promise. We're people of the name. Shouldn't he pour out revival? No, it's going to take somebody that'll say, God, I'll give you all I'll love you with all my heart, all my soul, all my mind, all my strength. Come on, is somebody that would find your eyes and say, God, I've held back my best long enough. I've held back my all long enough. And tonight I'm getting my best. I'm getting my everything. Come on, my family may not understand it. Sarah may think it's crazy to bring Isaac. My family may think it's crazy to put more money in the offering. My family may think it's crazy to get up early for prayer. My family may think it's crazy to dance and run the aisle, but you don't understand. I've got a revival I'm hungry for. Come on, Abundant Life. Are you hungry for revival? Are you hungry for the things of God? I know it may not make sense. I know it may not make a lick of sense to get Isaac and put your best on the altar, but I want you to know tonight that's what God wants to know. Will somebody climb a mountain? Will somebody get Isaac out of the field and put Isaac on the altar come on we read in the New Testament we read Paul right and he says by faith Abraham offered up the sacrifice of his son that through Isaac shall thy seed be called come on Abraham don't you understand what's riding on this moment everything's riding on you getting your Isaac to the altar at the time of sacrifice everything's riding on it out of this lineage of Isaac's going to come Jacob and Jacob's going to beget all these sons and Judah and David and Jesus don't you understand all the prophecy is being held up until you get Isaac on the altar there's no Calvary till you get Isaac on the altar there's no Acts 2 till you get the Isaac on the altar I feel like telling abundant life that there's all kinds of prophecies that's went forth to this church God's made this church all kinds of promises but it's all being held back until you can get Isaac and put your Isaac on the altar come on abundant life it's not time to try to give second best or third best. But God's trying to call a church and say, will you get your Isaac out of the field? Will you get your Isaac out of place of comfort and bring him to a mountain and build an altar and say, God, I'll give you everything. I'll give you my all. You can keep trying to protect your best. You can keep trying to hold on to it. I can't give more. I've got bills to pay. I can't pray more. I've got a job to do. I've got all that. And you can keep protecting your best. But as long as you keep your Isaac down there in the field protected, he's going to keep battling an Ishmael. Young person, as long as you keep holding back, you're going to keep battling lust and perversion. You're going to keep having problems in your marriage, young, young couple. You're going to keep having Ishmaels in your life. 
life until you make up in your mind I'm going to a mountain and I put my everything on an altar I wonder what healings tonight God's holding right here saying if somebody will build an altar and put their best on the altar if somebody will bring their all and build an altar I'll start convicting their family I'll start pouring out revival come on somebody I don't know what your Isaac is tonight but it's time to get Isaac out of the field and to an altar God wants your all I read over in Malachi where the Bible begins to tell us the Lord says they're trying they're trying to please me bring in their second best and blemished animals they're trying to get the presence of God to show up holding back and giving me their second best he said I'm not going to be pleased with the second best I'm not going to be pleased with what just might look okay but it's got some flaws I feel like the Lord's wanting abundant life to know tonight no more second best no more holding back no more putting Isaac up trying to protect him you get Isaac on the altar and the promises are going to come Revival's going to come. Healing's going to come. But it's not going to happen till you get Isaac on the altar. Come on. No Isaac. No Red Sea parting. No Isaac. No Jericho walls coming down. No Isaac. No promise of a, of a, of a Messiah. It's got to be a church that makes up in your mind. I'm getting my Isaac to an altar. I'm putting my best. I'm putting my all. I'm putting my everything to him. I read about a man by the name of Elisha Bishop and the Bible says that Elijah walks by him and he brushes him and Elisha he felt something he had never felt he had felt something that had never moved him before and he could have just said you know what I'll go join the school of the prophets I'll just go do what I could do and just give partial best but he made up in his mind I'm not interested in just getting what everybody else has got he said I'm going to go back I'm going to burn the plow. I'm going to slaughter the oxen. I'm going to give everything. Why? Because he was hungry for a double portion. I want to know tonight, is there anybody that's hungry for a double portion? Is there anybody hungry for miracles, signs, and wonders? Is there anybody hungry for healing? Is there anybody hungry to see your family pray through and souls you've never seen? Walk down to an altar, raise their hands, and be filled with the Holy Ghost. Come on, somebody. Somebody, get your Isaac out of the field. Come on, there's people moving. I don't got to keep preaching. I want to know tonight, is there somebody that would get your Isaac out of the field and bring it to an altar and say, God, I'm not holding back my best one more night. I'm not holding back my all one more night. But tonight I'm getting my Isaac. And in blessing, I shall bless thee. And in multiplying, I will multiply thee. And thy seed shall be as the sand of the earth and you'll possess the gate of your enemy. Come on, it's time for somebody to go behind the gates of the enemy and take back what the devil stole. It's time for somebody to get their healing. It's time for somebody's lost loved one to pray through. Come on, somebody. Get your Isaac out of the field. Get your all on the altar. Come on, I don't know what your Isaac is, but you do. I don't know what you've been holding back, but you do. I don't know what you've been holding on to, but you do. Get your Isaac to an altar tonight. God wants your best. God wants your all abundant life. Come on, church, let's pray. Let's pray. Come on, I got more notes, but God's moving right here. Right here, somebody. Somebody's getting their eyes cut. Come on, it's grievous for somebody. It's hurting you to lift up your Isaac and take it down there. It's hurting you to let go, but I want you to know on the other side of all, there's revival. On the other side of your all, there's a miracle. On the other side of your all, there's a miracle and a revival waiting for you. Come on. Come on, if you don't need to pray, help these people pray. If you don't need a miracle, help somebody pray. If you don't need your family, help these people pray. Come on. God, I'm giving all.
Withholding nothing, I surrender all to you. Everything I give to you. Withholding nothing, withholding nothing, withholding nothing withholding nothing I give you all of me 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 I give you Withholding nothing, withholding nothing, withholding nothing, I surrender all to you, everything I give to you, withholding nothing.
Come on, don't stop. I feel something breaking right now. Come on, cry out. Lift up your voice. I feel some chains being broken. I feel deliverance in this house. I feel miracles in this house. I heal, feel healing in this house. Come on, keep crying out. Keep crying out. There's victory in your voice. There's victory in this house.
Come on, let's make that our prayer tonight. I surrender, I surrender all. all. Oh, for it's all, all to Thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender all. A certain man came to Jesus one day, and he said, Lord, I want to be a part of what you're doing here. Jesus started spouting, spouting off all these commandments. And that guy's chest just started swelling up with pride. He said, man, I've kept every one of those from my youth up. I've dotted every I. I've crossed every T. You're talking about splits. I don't even own a skirt with the split. You're talking about bad movies. I don't even own a screen. Oh, I knew it'd get quiet now. You, you're talking. You're talking about not not cussing. I don't ever even say slang words. Oh man, I'm I'm all that in a bag of chips, Jesus. And Jesus said, "Well, that's great, but you're lacking something. Just one little thing. One thing. I need you to go sell everything you got. You're going to have to make an altar of all." And the Bible says that man followed him no more. He never walked around his ministry ever again. Because there's just one thing he wasn't ready to give up. You know, it's amazing. Everybody's is different. I was just having this conversation before church with somebody. I said, for me, dancing has never been an issue. Because my dad portrayed it. My mama portrayed it. When I went home and I was dancing, they didn't make fun of me and say, you look like an idiot. They was, man, that was good, Jeremy. I'm glad to see you worshiping God. Keep that up, son. So dancing's never been an issue for me. But for some people, when they came to church and danced the first time, their family made fun of them. And it's hard for them to dance. That's their all. But for some other person, money's never been an issue. And one person can't even dig past George. Without having a holy conniption. Everybody has something different. Our Isaacs are always not the same. And so the problem is, is we get to bragging about how we give everything. But there's one thing we don't want to give up. We're, we're snubbing our nose at Stephen Gray. Because he can't seem to give up that, that, that moment of prayer with God. But we never, never push back the plate. I, it always goes dead. Giving, plates, and prayer. We never fast. We don't want to fast. It's the beneath us to fast. So he fasts, but we don't. And he, you know, so we have, every one of us has different things. But this preacher tonight said, it don't matter what your thing is. Don't get up here and brag to God about how much you give. <laughs> Put it all on the altar. Put it all on the altar. I'm going to tell you a story. You can stone me after church. Y'all can stone me. I hesitate telling this story here because of how much I hate stones. But it was about two years from the time Jesus told me to first put the receipts on the altar and the time I actually did it. It was about two years. You know how long we were in a lawsuit? About two years. Now that wasn't the exact same time frame. But it was like Jesus said, listen son. If you can't give it all. I can't help you. I'm trying to help you here. I'm trying to be transparent enough to help you. We. He said. The promise is delayed. Calvary's delayed. Jesus is delayed. Until he gets his all on the altar. I got to give it all. To Jesus Christ. Now maybe it had nothing to do with it. Because I'll be honest. That lawsuit wasn't anything to do with me. They might have fought over that money the exact same amount of time. 
But the reality is, is I have to be willing to give it all. I have to be willing to stop. Why? Why can't we just lay receipts on the altar? Why can't we just do it? There was no reason. It's pieces of paper. It's procrastinations. It's a lack of obedience. It's just not doing what could trigger our promise. How easy it is to trust Jesus. I love that, I love that statement that a lot of preachers preach. While Abraham's walking up this side of the mountain, a ram's walking up that side of the mountain. While Abraham's knife's going in the air, a ram's horns is going in a thicket. It's just like Calvary. While I'm walking up this side of sacrifice, Jesus has already walked up that side of sacrifice. And while I'm trying to make sure I'm ready to really kill this thing, Jesus has already put his head in a crown of thorns for my sake. There's nothing Jesus hasn't already paid the price for. He just wants to see, will I meet him in the middle? And then when I meet him in the middle, he always comes through. Don't let there be some little thing hold you back. Don't let there be some little thing hold you back. Amen. Jesus, we love you and we thank you for the word tonight. We thank you because you always hear us. And you always strengthen our heart and our hands. And our ability to touch you is always found at an altar of prayer. I'm asking you to help us to receive this word from Brother Coffee and from your throne. In Jesus' name, I believe you for it. I thank you for it. Somebody say amen. Amen. Praise God. Somebody say tomorrow there is no church. Remember that as if you show up tomorrow night. I don't want you mad at me. It ain't my fault. But Sunday morning at 10, there'll be church at 6 o'clock. Church Sunday night. We're going to have a good time here in the Lord. We're going to be just ready to have a good time with Jesus. I'm, I'm excited about what this service is holding up. Amen. For Sunday, I believe we're going to see a move of the Spirit. I'm expecting somebody to be saved Sunday. Amen. More than just a visitor. I'm expecting people that are here to be saved that are just part of this church. Amen. We've got young people that their lives need touched from God. Amen. Praise God. We've got young people that need a move of the Spirit. Amen. We can't play games. The coming of the Lord is at hand. Amen. Praise the Lord. You're dismissed in Jesus' name. I love you. Shake hands with somebody around you and tell them you love them. Amen. If you don't love them, tell them you like them. Amen. That's always a joke. I'm just joking.